You know, it's almost like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. So holding this thing on my hand, it comes with a very nice weight to it. Not to the point that it's going to be way too heavy, but it does have like a very nice feel because it's like a quality feel when it comes to, it's not a lightweight, it's like Chinese junk that we have seen before. But also when it comes to, let's say the form factor of the device, it's absolutely comfortable and I just really love it. I've been playing with this thing for quite a long time now. And I can tell you, I was really surprised by it, how comfortable it was. But coming in with a weight of 256 grams, this thing has absolutely the nice sweet spot when it comes to the weight itself. The shell itself, already mentioned before, I'm getting some old school Sega vibe with this. And this is in a very positive way. But let's do a quick overview of the device itself. At the bottom we're finding the two SD cards. It's the same configuration with, let's say, the last like the 10 models or something like that. And of course, a headphone jack out. On top we're finding two Type-C connections, an HDMI mini, and then we're having even the reset button, volume control, and the on and off switch over here. But I'm very glad that he implemented a physical volume button, because this was not the case with some of the models with some devices. And then of course the mini HDMI. There is no cable for this in the box itself, so you can use a converter from a mini HDMI or you can get yourself a cable. But let's test out this function. Well, if you want to activate the system HDMI output, you need to plug in the cable and give it a reset if it already has been booted up. So this is actually the way how you need to play and it's absolutely looking great. Combining this with a Bluetooth controller or another way to add controllers, you just have like a game box that we can play all kinds of cool games with. And this way we can just play some old school games. And combining this with some bezels, this looks absolutely great, I can tell you that. Volume can also be adjusted throughout, let's say, the device itself. And you can just bring this thing with you, plugging into a television, have a lot of fun. The downside to this configuration is actually, so if you want to just get, plug it out and you just want to continue playing portable, yeah, this system is not great for this because you need to shut it down before you're even going to do this. So what you need to do with some device, it automatically shuts down through the device itself but you need to fully shut down the system itself unplug the cable and then boot up the system again maybe they can fix it with a software in the future so when you're looking at the button layout this thing is absolutely perfect so we're having the six button layout over here we even having the floating d-pad select the start over here at the, the sides of the screens at the top and we're having two front facing speakers <laughs> Depending on the emulator, I must say that some of the emulators don't go really loud, but the overall quality of the speakers is absolutely great. So this is one of those old school classic D-pads that I have seen on some, let's say, fake Sega controllers too, and of course the original one. The, and what I do find is absolutely amazing that it comes even with a very nice curve, a very nice, let's say, grip in overall, so it's very comfortable to play. So when it comes to the, say, the way you need to play, it's absolutely something you need to get used to. But when you're already playing with this for some time, when it comes to original Sega controllers, this thing is absolutely responsive and very comfortable to play. Okay, but when it comes to the D-pad, I must say that I already mentioned before is that you need to get used to it, two of the floating, let's say, construction. But when you're getting the hang of it, I can tell you this thing is absolutely one of the best D-pads you can actually use on this. It plays amazing, it responds perfectly when it comes to finding games. And yeah, also if you want to put in a certain direction, there was no problem whatsoever. And that is, this is just the reason I said this is one of the best D-pads that I've ever tried on these devices. So when looking at the buttons, and they are absolutely great and absolutely very comfortable. So first of all, when you're looking at the A, B, C buttons, so you can see there are a lot of already different, let's say, heights between them. That makes them absolutely like very comfortable. And also when it comes to the way the quality is, so you do have a little bit of a wiggle and that is needed for the room between the shell itself and the button. But you do have a slightly, let's say, an okay travel, but it feels quite nice. But what's interesting also with the X, the Y and the Z button, you can just see they're having the same kind of buttons, but also when it comes to the way where they're placed, but also when it comes to the travel and all the other things. 
So the ABC having, let's say, different kind of height, and is absolutely needed if you want to have the, let's say, the best comfortability. And then having the top ones to have the same kind of buttons. It's a very strange configuration. You don't see this very often when it comes to, let's say, the handhelds from China. Most of them, when you're looking at, let's say, previous models, they all have the same kind of buttons. So that makes it very unique. But let's get into some real nostalgia vibe with this Sega controller lookalike device. And of course the 6 button layout is something that we're going to be needing, having the authentic experience. Of course the X, A, B, A, Y, most of the games will just use the 3 buttons over here. But with this particular game, we're going to have the option to using the Z and the Y button for some extra input keys. Of course we can always map them to shoulder buttons with different handhelds, but I think this is just giving it a little bit more of a nostalgia vibe to it when it comes to this weight for playing it. But when you're looking at the device itself, this is absolutely great. This just looks amazing, but also feels... This is not the flat surface that we have seen many times before. And when you're actually going to be holding it, you can put your middle fingers underneath it. It gives this thing some extra comfortable, let's say, way to play. But let's talk about something else. The shoulder buttons. That is something we almost forgot, or I did. So over here we have a very interesting but a little bit of a disappointing configuration maybe for some of you. So first of all we're having two different buttons. Here you can see like this thing is a little bit longer and that's great because it makes it more comfortable to hold. But also both of them are just normal membrane buttons and not the trigger buttons. And when you're going to be holding them and just playing they can be reached fairly easy. And I can tell you I've been playing some GBA on this. And it's absolutely great. Nice travel and also a nice feel. But let's boot it up. Let's take a close look at the software itself. Because there also we're going to have like a lot of different options and things we can do with it. When one booted up, this is the menu we're getting. It's a quite basic menu, but I do like it. So first of all, when pressing start, here we're finding all of the options that we can change out. Think about the sound, controller, settings, and yep, you can pair on Bluetooth controller if you want to. So there are a lot of options you could do with this thing. You can just actually make this just a very cool game box. But that is something we're not going to be focusing on in this video. We have a option for the streaming setting, network settings, and we have all kinds of cool things you can do with it. Game settings, here we can even change out the aspect ratio and all the other things if you want to mess around with that. The UI settings can be changed out. We're having different versions. Let's change it out to one of them. And here we can check out that we're having a very fancy one looking. So that is one of the things you need to take consideration. I'm going to put it back all the way to the first one. Looks kind of basic, but I'll just really love it. So in here we're finding the different kind of things, say applications and options. Favorites, Red and RetroArc, emulators, apps, and recent list. So pressing this, you can check out all the recent games that you have played. So, but what I think is pretty damn interesting is, and also maybe it's kind of annoying, is that when you're looking at the emulators and RetroArch, we have a two huge lists with different kind of emulators. The biggest one is the RetroArch, and over here we're finding the emulators, and here we're finding different emulators. Yeah, different emulators. The, the Sega Dreamcast, the Saturn, the PlayStation Portable, and N64. But how will the emulation be? Let's check out that and let's try a couple of these games. But when we're in the game, you can just mess around with some more settings. So first of all, when you're pressing the X button over here, we're getting into the option to launch the game, add to your favorite and go to the advanced game option. So with this particular game or Naomi system, there's nothing much we can change out, but the game express ratio can be changed out if you want to, which you can see over here. I we're going to leave it to automatic, but that's it. Okay, so when it comes to emulation performance, Sega Naomi runs pretty good on this. Of course, depending on what kind of game you're actually going to be playing, two-dimensional games are not that demanding, of course, compared with, let's say, the 3D games. But it's absolutely just great to see where we're coming from when it comes to these devices. So in the beginning, I already mentioned of the top buttons over here with the on-off switch and the volume. I said it was a reset button, but I should have said better, like it's the menu button or, yeah, it's actually resetting the game system, of course, or the game they're actually playing. By pressing this button, it will bring you to the menu, depending on what kind of emulator you're having. But in here, we're going to have the option to go back to the main menu and even making quick load, quick save. The only weird thing is with some of the emulators, we have an extra menu we need to get out of. This doesn't have this doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. 
Oh yeah, so there was only one downside to configuration without any joysticks is because yeah, we're going to need it and I mean particularly when you want to play in a certain comfortable way and you can actually play some golden eye on this device with this button configuration but it does not really recommend it because you're going to have like the d-pad for moving around for example in combination with a couple of buttons the emulation performance is absolutely horrendous on these things there are a couple of games that can be played but you will see a lot of glitches going on over here and you can see also a lot of stuttering going on it's still playable you can just see that i need to navigate with the buttons at the side and the d-pad i wanted to say it's going to be very horrible let's check out which button i need to press so we can actually play some GoldenEye, but I can already tell you this is not the way how you actually want to experience the game. Yeah, no, this is not a very pleasant experience. Oh, wait, he's coming to me. Okay, now we can go move on. Well, when exiting the game with the emulators, here we do have a different kind of emulator, like say every single time. So we need to have a different kind of way to exit the game. Take the note that it's going to be in combination most of the time with the F button, with start or something else. But that's something you need to check out in the manual itself. And I'm very glad that they implemented the manual with the freaking package itself. But another system I just love to check out is some PlayStation Portable. And here we will find an overall mixed performance. Take note, it's going to be an original resolution with no frame skin enabled, but the performance itself is so much improved compared with all the other hands that we've checked out here on the channel. You can just see that it the stutters and it dips down, so we can implement frame skip for a slightly overall better experience. But PlayStation Portable will always be one of those systems with its cheaper chips. It may not have like 100% perfect like overall gameplay experience. But it also depends on what kind of game you're actually going to be playing. Two-dimensional games are less demanding. Think about Darius Boost, one of those games I love to test out to play on PlayStation Portable. Well, it's quite amazing to see that we can actually play. Pressing the F button here we can get into the settings. Oh, and go into missing with it. If you want to check out what kind of situation we're going on when it comes to frame skipping enabled. I think a lot of things have been implemented when it comes to this particular device, when it comes to specifications. But again, this is one of the best things we're getting when it comes to the chipset itself. So we can shut down V-Sync if you want to, we can mess around with other things. Laser textures already have been enabled. Like this is kind of interesting that this has been set to high. We can even put this to low and can start tweaking to get an overall better performance. But again, if you need to start doing this, yeah, am I a I think uh, this is not the way I want to experience some PlayStation Portable. But getting into the Sega Saturn, I just wanted to check out some basic games. For example, with the Sexy Parodius games, it's such a fun game. I think the first time I've ever played it was on the PlayStation 1. Another reason I wanted to check out how is it with Shmup if you need to navigate through the stages. And I can tell you, it's a very pleasant experience. Okay, so next up, let's take a close look at the Sega Dreamcast. And you know the naming of these characters are kind of funny. This guy is called Fokker. <laughs> okay. Nevertheless, let's take a close look at some gaming. I've been playing this game quite a lot before I was even recording this. And I can tell you, I really enjoyed myself some Power Stone too. This is such a cool game. I think this is one of those hidden gems for the Sega Dreamcast. You can just play them on the Dreamcast with four players. That's so much fun. But the overall performance of Sega Dreamcast on this device is just great. Let's move on to the retro arc list and check out some on Thomas Wave. And Thomas Wave is one of those systems that do struggle with a lot of game boxes that we've seen before. But that's been implemented in combination with the bezel. But the overall performance itself is not bad at all. I'm just going to be honest, I have never really enjoyed this game. When you ever 
positive and negative sides. I'm just going to be honest. I'm very positive about this particular product. Emmerdick nailed it with this. And this is absolutely giving me some next level of nostalgia feeling. With great overall performance when it comes to most of the devices, let's say emulators, this is just such a cool device to play and revisit your old school games. Let me know in the comments what do you think of it if you bought it. Thank you all for watching and it would be great to see you in the next video. Thank you.